The study of these books is very technical, especially Sahih al-Bukhari, and even Sahih Muslim. And this gives you some insight into the manner of reading and studying these books. It's not just casual reading from the beginning till the end. Rather, it's a very intensive study covering many aspects of learning in every chapter or detail, but that's just the nature of the hadith itself. And then I'll, I'll share a few thoughts about some of the lessons we can learn from this hadith. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وبالسند المتصل مني إلى الإمام مسلم رحمه الله قال حدثنا عمرو بن زرارة قال حدثنا هشيم عن أبي هاشم عن أبي مجلز عن قيس بن عبادة قال سمعت أبا ذر رضي الله عنه يقسم قسما إن هذان قسما اختصموا في ربهم إنها نزلت في الذين برزوا يوم بدر حمزة وعلي وربيدة بن الحارث وعتبة وشيبة ابن ربيعة والوليد بن عتبة وبه قال حدثنا أبو بكر بن أبي شيبة قال حدثنا وكيع بن حان وحدثني محمد بن المثنى قال حدثنا عبد الرحمن جميعا عن سفيان عن أبي هاشم عن أبي مجلز عن قيس بن عباد قال سمعت أبا ذر رضي الله عنه يقسم لأن زلت هذان خصمان بمثل حديث هشيم This is the final hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa In fact, these aren't the words of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa himself, because these are the words of Abu Dhar radiyallahu anhu. But this is the final hadith of Sahih Muslim. Imam Muslim's kitab, his compendium, his collection, is divided into many different books. And the final book, in the collection of Imam Muslim's book of hadith is Kitab al-Tafsir, in which the book of Quranic commentary. So in this final book, Imam Muslim rahmatullahi alayhi has collected a hadith which speak directly about the interpretation and explanation of some of the verses of the Holy Quran. And this is the final hadith. So what does the final hadith say? Qais ibn Ubaq, who was one of the students of the Sahaba radiallahu anhu, he relates that he met Abu Dhar al-Ghifari radiallahu anhu, and Abu Dhar al-Ghifari radiallahu anhu, one of the most noble and prominent companions, of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He would swear in the name of Allah that the verse of the Holy Quran, inna hadhan khasman ikhtasamu fi rabbi. And the meaning of the verse is, inna hadhan khasman ikhtasamu fi rabbihim. Indeed, these two, i.e. groups, these two parties, are two adversaries, two opponents, who have differed about their Lord. So Abu Dhar, Qais ibn Ubad says, I met Abu Dhar radiallahu anh, and he swore in the name of Allah <coughs> that th this verse was revealed about two groups of people. And the two groups of people were, on the one hand, Hamza, Ali, and Ubaidat ibn Harith, radiyallahu anhu. And the other group was Shayba, Utba, and Al-Walid ibn Utba. So that's the hadith. So what does this report mean? What does it refer to? And as I said, this is the slightly technical discussion. In the Holy Quran, there's a verse, it's a very long verse. In the Hadan Khasman Khasmu fi Rabbihim. 
فَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا قُطِّعَتْ لَهُمْ ثِيَارٌ مِنْ نَارٍ And the, verse continue, the verses continue. But what this refers to is that the Qur'an, indeed, these are two groups that have fallen into conflict, that have differed and disputed about their Lord. So all Allah is saying is that here are two groups of people, one group, second group, and they have differed about their law, about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They have different beliefs, they have different thoughts about their Lord Allah. As a result, they aren't just two groups, but rather they are khasman, i.e. they are opponents of one another. They are adversaries. And normally, the word khasm in Arabic means an adversary, an opponent, especially in court or when passing judgment. So what this means is that these two groups are adversaries in the court of Allah. They are opponents in the court of Allah. Now, a number of Sahaba radiyallahu anhum and ulama since then have always believed that the reference of these two groups is simply the believers who believe in Allah, that's one group, and the unbelievers, those who don't believe in Allah, the other group. So it's very general. This is what Abdullah ibn Abbas used to say. So Imam Abdullah ibn Abbas is two famous students, who are also students of Abdullah ibn Umar Imam Mujahid ibn Jabal, Imam Ata ibn Abi Rabah, both of these, Ata and Mujahid, both of these students of the Sahaba radiallahu they also said the very same thing. That this verse simply refers to two general groups. And who are the two general groups? One group that believes in Allah and the other group that doesn't believe in Allah. And Allah is saying of these two groups, that they are khasman, adversaries of each other in the court of Allah. And that's what the ulam, many of the ulama of Islam believe, and it's a generally accepted view. And this is what Abdullah ibn Abbas used to say too, that this verse refers to general believers as one group, and the other group, the other group being those who don't believe. It's in this context that Abu Dhar al-Ghifari another, another famous companion of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he used to say no this verse refers to two groups of very specific people not general not general believers and general unbelievers rather this verse refers to two very specific groups of people and then he would name the two groups of people three in each group and this is what Abu Dhar used to say and he used to swear in the name of Allah that he would swear in the name of Allah and say I swear in the name of Allah this verse was revealed about the following six people Three of them one group, and three of them the other group. And it is these two groups which will face off against each other, and which will stand as opponents of each other in the court of Allah on the day of reckoning. And who are these two groups? So he would name them. And they are, on the one hand, Hamza ibn Abd al-Muttalib, Ubaidah ibn al-Harith, Ali ibn Abi Talib and their adversary Allah marched from Al-Madinah to Munawwara and this was in the month of Ramadan and 
and eventually the Quraysh from Mecca to Mukarrama and the Muslims from Al Madinah to Munawwara met at the wells of Badr. And there, that pivotal battle of Badr took place, which Allah mentions in the Holy Quran. And it was the tradition of the Arabs that before a battle took place between two armies or two military factions, at the very beginning of the battle, they would have what they would call a mubaraza, meaning a duel. So one champion would come from one side, another champion, another champion would come from the other side, and these two champions would have a single duel. And then following this mubaraza, this duel, the main battle would take place between the armies. That was just one of the customs of not just the Arabs, but many other armies throughout the world. In keeping with this tradition, on the day of Badr, the battle didn't just begin with both armies clashing. Rather, the battle began with the duel of champions. So from the Quraysh, from the Meccan army, three people stepped forth. And they were Utbat ibn Rabi'a. That's the first, that's one of the names mentioned. The second person to step forth was his brother, Shaybat ibn Rabi'a. Utbah, the son of Rabi'a. Shayba, the son of Rabi'a. And the third person to step forth was Utbah's son, Al-Walid, Al-Walid ibn Utbah. So father, son, father, and uncle, two brothers and one son of the brother, all three members of one family. And they were from the Banu Abd Shams from the family of Abdul Manaf. So, and I'll explain that in a moment. So these were three members of one family they stepped for. So, three of the Ansar from the Muslim army, they came for. And they were Ansari Sahaba radiallahu anhu, who were from who were original inhabitants of Al-Madinah from Munawwara. So when they came forth, these three said to them, you are not our equals. You cannot face us in the duel of champions. You are not our equals. Go away. And they shouted at Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that, O oh, Muhammad, don't send out these people because they are not our equals. Send forth our equals to face us. Utbah, Shaybah, and Walid from the first, and Utbah, Shaybah, and Walid from the non-Muslims, from the Quraysh of Mecca. Now, why, why did these six face off against each other? And why did the Prophet ﷺ send forth Hamza, Ali, and Ubaidah? Why these three? to face Utbah, Shayba, and Walid. It's because ultimately they were all of one family. All of these were the family of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, both from the Muslims and the non-Muslims. So, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's father was Abdullah. His father was Abdul Muttalib. His father was, was Hashim. 